Hi everybody, it's Professor Michelson here. Um, welcome to our victimology class. This lecture uh, is about our first class, uh, who is a victim, uh, what is victimology. For this class you should have read uh, in your book, uh, chapter one, um, this referred to in the syllabus as BRNR. Uh, you should have read chapter one in this book, Crime and Victimology. It's really sort of an introduction to the topic. Um, and I'm just here to highlight a few things in the chapter and sort of bring a little bit extra to the chapter just to get your juices flowing and to start some discussions that you might hopefully continue in the discussion boards. So, um, as you will have read, uh, over, the time, over time with our criminal justice system, the victim was left out of the process. The focus of the criminal justice system is on the person who is accused of a crime and then convicted of a crime. Uh, the victim, uh, victims have been used primarily as witnesses for the state and then don't really have, haven't had really so much of a role. Now, there is a recent, uh, more recent interest in victims um, into uh, sort of reintegrating them into our criminal justice system uh, in various roles. Um, and uh, that's a big part of what we're going to be talking about. Frankly, it's sort of why we're talking about what we're talking about. The emergence of classes on victimology, um, on this focus on victims, is relatively new. So uh, the fact that we're talking about it at all is what's important. Now, uh, those of you who have taken criminology classes, uh, most many of you will have taken a, a class in criminology. You remember that criminology is the study of criminal behavior and of um, offenders, criminal offenders. Um, the focus of criminology is a theoretical focus, trying to get to why do people commit crime, uh, or if we're taking a critical criminological perspective, why are certain acts considered criminal and others not? Um, now, victimology, on the other hand, is the study of victims. Um, so, uh, sort of a, a shift in how we are focusing our attention. Instead of focusing on the criminal, we're focusing on the victim. Now, um, victimology, more traditional victimology, is a um, uh, has a theoretical focus that resembles criminology. Um, it uh, studies um, the causes of criminal victimization, um, how can we prevent criminal victimization, um, what, um, uh, what can we do to avoid victimization in general. Um, by understanding the roots of it, how can we prevent it. Now, more modern victimology is focused on uh, restoring a victim uh, to a pre-victimization state. Uh, imagine what would it need to what would need to happen to fix someone's physical uh, well-being, economic well-being, emotional well-being. What would need to happen to get somebody back as close as possible? to where they were before this happened. How do we ameliorate people's suffering? Uh, I think about someone I know who um, was victimized in a, um, can't even really call it an accident, but um, got uh, hurt when somebody hit them with a car and then drove off. Um, and the question, frankly, that I posed to that person at the time is, what would need to happen to restore you to your pre-victimization state. It might not be perfect, but what needs to happen to get you back to that place? And it's not just money, and it's not just telling the person that they did something wrong, right, the, the victimizer that they did something wrong, but also, you know, did this person want to get uh, physical therapy that the person paid for, or massages that the person paid for to make the pain go away, uh, or did the person need um, some sort of talk therapy to make them less afraid of it happening again. Um, there are all these different pieces, and is there money that the person wanted to get them back to feeling as though they had been restored. So um, more modern victimology focuses on that uh, restoration piece. Now. 
uh, traditional victimology, just getting back to what I was saying before, but traditional victimology uh, started out uh, really in the 40s. Uh, there's a set of, of theorists who put together typologies. Um, courses like this, uh, in courses like this, typologies can be very useful. Now we're going to talk more about typologies in, uh, in a future class when we talk about theories of, of victimization, but you know you should be aware that we have some coming. Uh, von Henting, for example, uh, Mendelssohn, uh, Schaefer, uh, people who tried to look at victims and say, what types of victims are there? How can we categorize victims uh, into different types that then would let us address um, the roots and prevention? Um, now, um, a couple of other quick things. Um, in our theory section, actually getting back to that, in our theory section we're going to be talking about victim precipitation as well, which is a rather controversial idea. Uh, what is the role of victims in their own victimization? I sort of wanted to give, that a, um, give you a heads up about that. Now, crime is going down. Your, your book mentions it, and we're going to be talking about it next class uh, when we get into measurement of crime. Uh, and how in the world do we know how crime is happening and who is victimized? One of my favorite topics in any class is uh, critical analysis of victimization, or not victimization only, but of data at all. How do we know what we know, especially in a topic like crime and victimization, where often, very, very often, crimes do not get reported to police. They don't get reported to uh, researchers. So how do we know what we know? Um, one of the things that the official statistics have told us relatively consistently is that recently crime is going down, though we talk very much about being afraid of crime and believing that it go, it's going up and the role of the media in uh, our fear and what that can do to us. Again, we'll be talking about media and fear of crime later in the semester. But it's a very important part of introducing this topic of victimology. And I'd like over the course of the semester for you to be thinking about what your preconceived notions are about crime, about victims, and um, how those may or may not get debunked by the facts over the course of the semester. Uh, I've created a discussion board on Blackboard where you can put in your preconceived notions about crime. Um, but I'd like you to be careful and not just put up that you believe that you know, people are getting more violent, or that you're, that drugs are everywhere now and they didn't used to be, uh, or that Leave it to Beaver used to be normal and now everything is crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like you to, over the, you know, get, come back to that discussion board and recognize where you um, might have been wrong. Now, uh, we'll be talking also about the victims' rights movement. Um, and how the emergence of that victims' rights movement um, over the course of the 1960s, starting in the 1960s, uh, children's rights, victims com victim compensation, um, victim impact statements, for example, in our court system, uh, legal reforms that have happened uh, in, our, uh, in, in the system. Um, we're going to be talking about that as well and how that's really changed the face of victimology and, and really, in some ways, the shape of our criminal justice system because we are bringing this different perspective um, into, um, uh, into our system. So, I've created, a discussion, I've created two discussion boards on Blackboard that I'd like you to use to get you started on your required postings. As I said, the first one is about preconceived notions of crime and victims. I'd like you to put in what you think due to your media consumption. I don't know if you uh, watch CSI or um, any of the other shows about crime, whether they're um, more documentary style or whether they're uh, fiction shows. Um, or whether you're getting your preconceived notions from your own experiences. Um, but I'd like you to start in there and remember to go back over the course of the semester. Now, the second discussion board that I've posted uh, asks you to be a little bit more exploratory. Um, there, it includes a link to the OVC, the Office of Victims of Crime, um, and I'd like you to poke around there. Uh, the the website um, is uh, an incredibly dense 
source of information um, and resources. And I'd like you to um, to just poke around. See what you find. Does anything interest you? Does anything surprise you? Um, uh, did you find something uh, that uh, you sort of uh, wanted to find more, find out more about that you went and, and googled um, to learn more about it. But it is a federal agency um, sponsored by uh, the Office of Justice Programs, and uh, maybe it'll surprise you what's up there. So get going on your discussion boards. Um, as you uh, know, our next class. Is um, focuses on the measurement of victimization. Again, one of my favorite topics. Um, you'll be reading chapter two in your book um, uh, to go over measurement of victimization. And those of you who've mm -hmm. taken classes like criminology and research methods and statistics, you will find some of these topics very familiar where we're talking about where do data come from and uh, what are the benefits and challenges of each of those different ways of collecting data. Um, so get to reading, get to posting on the discussion boards, and, uh, and we'll see each other again soon. Take care.